Awesome. Hello, everyone. Welcome in. Welcome to our Paying for College event tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Looks like everybody's kind of flooding in now. We'll give it just a, a few minutes here. Sorry, I know we started two minutes late. Um, but we will get started here in just a minute. I think we have about 40 people in attendance tonight. So um, we'll, we'll give them a few minutes to enter in and then we'll get started here. Um, I will probably end up introducing myself five to 20 times before we get started, but my name is Cole and I'm one of the admissions representatives here at APU. And I have the pleasure of working with all of your students, working with you, um, working with the families, talking through um, really everything that has to do with admissions at APU. Um, and that includes the finances. So that's kind of why we're all here tonight. We're gonna to learn a little bit more about paying for college as the name of this event would inform. Um, so really excited to have you all here. Excited to get the conversation started, to ask uh, any questions you all have, and hopefully to walk out of here, virtually walk out of here with uh, more information than we came in. Um, but one of my coworkers, Autumn, she is working our Q&A box tonight. And so for any questions, there she is, for any questions that you have, feel free to uh, put those in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the, the Zoom webinar function, I know it was very new to me, uh, but the Q&A um, is specifically for these bigger webinars. You can just put your question in there. That'll get sent to us. And then we will um, tackle some of those in the, the chat box or rather the Q&A box. Autumn will answer the more kind of generic and admissions related questions. All of the other ones, we'll try and save um, for them to be answered live just because they might be helpful for everyone to hear the answer to. So I'll try and answer some of those live um, as long as they're you know not ridiculously difficult for me to answer, but no. Um, I will answer all of those and any questions that you have after this as well. You can also reach out to your specific admissions representative. Um, we have uh, about eight of them on our team. So they are more than happy to, to talk with you, to chat through any questions you have, um, whether that be related to finances or, or really anything else. So we're excited to, to be doing this. Awesome. Well, I'll probably give it another minute here to let people enter in. Yes, and Camille from our events team just also added in the chat, you can email ugadmissions at apu.edu if you don't know who your rep is and, and you want to ask any questions there. Um, yeah. They are more than happy to connect you with your rep or answer your questions. Um, so they're super helpful. <clears throat> awesome. Looks like we have a few other people coming in now. Welcome in. Probably get started here in just a minute or so. This is always the time of the events that I wish I was a stand-up comedian or knew some kind of like virtual magic tricks that I could do to, to kind of spend the time here. <laughs> we got another one who just joined, welcome in. This is the Paying for College event and we're happy to have you. I'll give it one more minute here and we'll start it. 608. <clears throat> and one more time for all the people who have joined in the last few minutes here. My name is Cole Bryant. I'm one of the admissions rep representatives here at Azusa Pacific University. Um, I, uh, we're just so happy to have you here tonight at this event. Um, and we're going to go through kind of everything having to do with the financial aid and finances of paying for college. Um, and so I will go through kind of my spiel and presentation that I have for this event, but we will also have a Q&A um, that you can put your questions into and uh, Autumn will be 
looking at that chat box ready to answer those that are more kind of generic and admissions related. And then we'll save some more for the end um, that I can answer live as well. But I just saw that we hit 608. So I'm gonna jump right in here and I will share my screen. Okay. Hopefully you all can see the right screen there. Sorry, give me one second here. Okay, I think you all can see that properly. Um, if not, you can let me know in the chat. Oh, there we go, looks good, perfect. Great, okay, so paying for college, that is the event that we are at right now. Um, thank you all so much for coming tonight. Um, again, my name's Cole, happy to have you all here, excited to talk through this, this conversation of finances with you. Um, and yeah, we can kind of jump right into it right now. So uh, for the event tonight, we have four main sections that we're gonna go through. First of which being the investment and affordability section, where we kind of talk about the, the return on investment and what it is you're, you're putting your money towards and what that looks like both um, now and in the future. Uh, part two is scholarships. Um, there's a number of different kinds of scholarships that we offer at APU. Who gets those and, and typically how much? Um, and those are that's free money awarded based on the academics or other achievements or participatory scholarships. Third part is grants, and that is free money based on financial need determined by the FAFSA. And we'll talk uh, a bit more about FAFSA towards the end of the presentation. And then finally, part four is loans. Um, so through APU, we have several different loans. Um, federal loans that we can um, offer students um, that's not directly connected to the university. So, you know, APU doesn't kind of have any benefit of, of you taking out loans through us. We just offer those to you if you'd like to use them. Um, but those are money, that, that is money received now, but paid back with interest later. So let's jump in here. Just as a reminder, if you have any questions, throw those in the Q&A box so Autumn can take a look at those. Um, and we'll get those answered. So first section here, investment and affordability. So when talking about education as an investment, um, there's two main sections of um, you know, that investment. First, there's kind of the initial, after you graduate, your employability. You know, People go to college so that they can find hopefully a good job when uh, soon after they graduate. Um, that is relevant to their major, what they've been studying, or something that's close to that. And so that's the first half of it. The second is the long-term investment. You know, um, the employability, the continued job growth, the continued qualifications, the growth of salary, um, and along with that, also being well-equipped as a Christian and a difference maker in the workplace. So that's something that we want all of our students um, to be able to come out of the university uh, knowing how to do and feeling equipped in that way. We started just to, you know, to go back snapshot to 120 years ago, we were founded in 1899 by a woman named Mary Hill. We were called the training school for Christian workers. And we only had about 14 students. And the dream was to equip those 14 students, send them out into the world to do excellent work in whatever their field may be, whether that be mission or missions or business or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and that's kind of what our hope is to this day. Our mission has stayed the same. And um, yeah, all of that to say, we want to equip our students to be difference makers who are excellent in their field um, and can continue to succeed um, in their jobs um, as, uh, as they, their life goes on. So what are you investing in? 
during college. Um, and so we have um, kind of four touch points here on what it is that you're investing, uh, investing in. The first of which being student to faculty ratio. And I think we have, yeah, there we go. So we have a 12 to one student to faculty ratio. And that just kind of says, that shows that we want our students to be more than just a number on campus. We really want them to be seen and heard and be able to have conversations with their professors um, and you know, understand the, the content intimately. One of my favorite parts um, of being a student at APU was getting to connect with my professors, going over to their house with other classmates to have dinner and sometimes talk about class stuff, sometimes talk about something that's entirely different. Um, but I just thought that was so cool. And there was so much wisdom imparted to me as a result of these, the student to faculty ratio. Similarly, our average class size is 19 students. Um, I was in one of the most popular majors at the time. Uh, business management, and the biggest class I ever had was 60 students, and that was the only class that I had over 25 students. So it was one huge marketing class, and even, you know, 60 students is pretty normal for some other colleges, um, but here we have an average class size of 19 students, where you can, again, really intimately understand the content that you're learning, um, be able to ask all the questions you need, get the the time and attention that you need in order to um, really understand it, what it is that you're studying. Uh, next, we have zero majors with impacted classes. And basically impacted classes is just when the supply of the amount of seats in the room is less than the demand for that class. And so we have zero impacted classes, zero impacted majors. Um, that is not an issue at APU. And we have 100% availability for all of those majors. And finally, campus employment. This is a, a huge conversation that we love to have with all students. Um, we are a mainly student-run campus, so we have more than 1,800 jobs on campus. So whether that be being a chapel card monitor, like myself while I was a student, or if you wanna work at one of our restaurants, or um, you can play in our chapel band, you can work at the library, the possibilities are kind of endless. Um, and that's just you know ways for students to get connected with other students as well as just being able to help pay for tuition, help for help pay for whatever it is, you know, even if it's just covering gas or um, anything else, you know, they'll receive those paychecks um, as they would any other paycheck. And some students do qualify just while I'm here, some students do qualify for what's called federal work study. Um, and based off of your FAFSA, which again, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later, um, we would let you know if you're eligible for federal work study. And that's just a nice little extra added benefit where students can receive some money and in the eyes of the government, it's seen as scholarship as opposed to income. And so they're more likely the next year when they complete the FAFSA to um, receive grants um, from the, the federal and state government. So um, if you have more questions about that, feel free to ask that in the Q&A or um, feel free to, to um, reach out to your individual admissions rep as well. And so post-grad, what are you investing in? After college, you are investing in continuing education and employability, kind of like what I was talking about in that last slide. Um, that's obviously a huge part of the investment of college. Um, you want your children to have a great education, to be employed um, by a good company, find a good job that they can you know, hopefully find joy in and, and have a passion for, be compensated fairly for that, um, and be able to make a difference in those workspaces as well. Um, you're investing in potential graduate school placement. We have a lot of students who go on to graduate school um, in a number of different fields. Um, third, finding a job, already touched on that, employability. Um, and finally, salary and a career in the short and long term. So entering into the workforce with a higher, sal higher salary because of your education, as well as kind of getting set on a trajectory where your salary will continue to be higher than if you would not have come to um, APU. And so quick stat here, um, as far as employability goes, after graduating, 83% of the class of 2019 found work or are continuing their education in some way. Um, and, you know, I graduated in 2018, so I can definitely attest this to be true with just the people that I was seeing 
around me. Um, and so many people also continued on to, like I was saying, grad school. I had uh, many friends and just other APU students that I knew who went on to go to seminary, um, to um, uh, grad school with business or to get their marriage and family therapy licensing, um, all of that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, that's just a great stat when, when trying to figure out kind of what that actually looks like. What is the, the tangibles of who's actually being employed post-grad at APU? And so here for our, our visual learners, we have our first graph of the day. Um, so this says APU alumni earn more over their lifetime than other schools. And this is just exactly what I was just talking about, entering into the workforce with a higher salary than you would um, if you hadn't gone to APU. And so here on this graph, you can see that two years after uh, entering into the workforce, APU students have about, um, $16,000 more in their salary than those of the national average. So we got 26, uh, 26,913 for the, na the national average salary and 42,000 for APU students. And then even as you continue on to six years after they graduate, um, APU students are making uh, still significantly more than those of the national average at 51,100 and uh, the national average students are at 33.28. So you can kind of see over time, um, even two years out, up to six years out, APU students are really showing that that, that investment is paying off. And so now we can talk about um, the dreaded sticker price versus the true cost of attendance. And this is, a really basic difference here. The sticker price is the, the big scary number that you see um, at the beginning of conversations typically. So when you Google APU and ask, uh, and, and Google how much does it cost to go to APU, to attend APU, you're gonna see a big number close to about $51,000. And, you know, it's a big number where that, you know, we need to kind of talk through that. What does that entail? Um, but in reality, after all of the different kinds of free aid from academic merit scholarships and grants and participatory scholarships and a number of other things, the true cost of attendance is what you're actually going to be paying out of pocket after all of those things um, come through. And so uh, when we look at the true cost of attendance, which I believe is this next slide here. Yeah, so it's the average true cost for private colleges. And on the left there, you see that the, the average true cost for Azusa Pacific is 26,293. And for um, the average of other private colleges in uh, the United States, it's 33,220. So about 7,000 less uh, in true cost going into the university. Um, and so with that, there's two key factors with that, who receives aid and how much aid is offered to them. And so obviously seeing that um, starting at the, the scary sticker price of about 52,000 and the average true, true cost is 26,293. Um, you can see that there's, there's quite a bit of free aid there. And so then the, the next conversation then is, you know, you wanna, you wanna know how much debt you're going to be coming out of college with based off of that true cost and all that free aid, um, how much student loan is, how much in student loans is my student going to walk out of the university with? And so again, for visual learners here, um, we have the average federal student loan debt and uh, compared to the national average of student debt at $36,510, APU is down at an average of $24,250 in student loans uh, debt. Um, yeah, and so that's, that's quite a bit less. That's about $12,000 less than the national average of, of students with student loans. Um, so that's definitely something to, to keep, uh, to be aware of as well. So that's kind of the, a bit of the more generic uh, return on investment conversation. Now we can get into a bit more of the details as far as scholarships go. So first we have academic scholarships that are based off of GPA and typically test scores. Currently APU is test optional. So we don't require the SAT or ACT for any of our students. It can only help their application. So um, if they are applying to APU, um, if they have completed the SAT, ACT, or both, 
um, that can only help. We'll never bring down their academic merit scholarships as a result of having a, a poor test score there. And so um, this is one of my most, uh, you know, I get most excited about the academic scholarships at APU because 100% of students who are admitted into the university receive some kind of academic merit scholarship. And that's just so cool to me. I mean, I went to APU and that was mind blowing to me then and it, it's mind blowing to me now. So just super exciting that if your student is admitted into APU, they will receive um, at least right now $11,000 in academic merit scholarship. And so then the next kind of scholarship is program-based scholarships. This consists of sports, obviously, um, any of our athletics, um, we can connect you with coaches to, to start that conversation. Different clubs on campus, and that would be, that would kind of fall into the participatory scholarships. And then finally, major specific. There are some, there is a number of, of different majors on campus who um, offer uh, significant scholarships for their program. And then finally, outside scholarships. So these would be outside of Azusa Pacific. Um, they can be local to different organizations in your area, or they can be online scholarships. Um, and so we, some of the, the websites that you can go to to look those up are fastweb.com or scholarships.com, um, or we have a number of other different websites that you can look into. Um, if you'd like to reach out to your specific admissions representative, we kind of have a list that we recommend students go to. And I think the stat is for every seven outside scholarships you apply for, you are likely to receive one of them. And so we tell students often um, as they're in their senior year to consider applying to outside scholarships like a part-time job because it can really make or break um, the affordability of going to college sometimes. Uh, because if you apply to seven different scholarships and then you, make, you get one and it's $5,000 and that can be a game changer. So here are our academic merit scholarships that we offer at APU. And this is what I was talking about when mentioning 100% of our students um, who are admitted receive an academic merit scholarship. So these are solely based off of students' GPAs coming out of high school. And so their GPA will align with one of these categories. Um, and so we have at the bottom Mary Hill Award for $11,000 going all the way up to our president scholarship, which is $22,000. And so Mary Hill, directors, deans, provosts, and presidents, those are all of our academic merit scholarship. And then separately, the trustees scholarship at the top is our full tuition scholarship. This actually for this upcoming fall uh, 2022 year has closed because um, that scholarship application is due by November 15th, um, but for upcoming semesters uh, in the fall, you can apply for that by November 15th of, of the year before. So um, for, for next year, you'd have to apply by November 15th, uh, 2022. But all of that to say, um, trustees is kind of its own thing. There's a, a separate application. Um, we're not just looking at GPA. It's a much more rigorous process where we look at GPA, we look at community involvement, we, we bring students in who are finalists for interviews, and we try and look at the holistic student um, to see you know, who they are in addition to what their transcript says. Um, but this is, this is huge. This, if there's one thing that you hear from all of this, um, that 100% stat, that all students who are admitted receive some kind of financial aid in the form of uh, merit scholarships. That's just um, really imp important information to know. So then some additional scholarships at APU. Like I mentioned, we have athletic scholarships. And so um, if there are any parents of athletes or athletes who are watching this right now, if you're interested in being an athlete, uh, a call collegiate athlete, um, you can reach out to your admissions rep. They will give you a form that can that you can complete. That is then sent directly to the coaches, and they kind of review all of those and then um, determine which students they want to to reach out to to start the conversation. Um, maybe open it up to athletic scholarships as well. Next, we have multi ethnic leadership, and that's a really cool scholarship, participatory scholarship that we have on campus. Um, that is a scholarship where students who are chosen for that, I think it's a handful of students, maybe um, six or seven of those are chosen each year. And those students live on campus all four years and hold some kind of leadership position for all four years. 
Um, and so they are typically students who are passionate about diversity on and off campus and will kind of um, integrate that into their leadership position in some way during their four years. So that's a really cool program. Again, if you want some more details on that, we'd be happy to, to provide that. And then finally, we have the pro program specific scholarships. And these are just a few of the examples we have here. One is College of the Arts. There's a number of different scholarships that are connected to the various majors in College of the Arts. Um, uh, we have you know, a bunch of different programs from Bachelors of Fine Arts to um, just Bachelor of Arts. Um, and that can look at a number of different ways. So if you'd like more information on that as well, we can kind of um, provide that for you. School of Music is also another program that offers a lot of scholarships, as you, you might assume. Um, they always encourage students who are going into some kind of music related major to audition for those scholarships because um, there's, yeah, just usually a lot of scholarships that are offered. And then finally, accounting as well. It's a smaller major, but they do have a lot of funds that are available for scholarships. So if you are interested in accounting, um, definitely apply for that. And um, again, contact your admissions rep and we can give you next steps to, to do that. So those are the scholarships. Now we can get more into the grants. So FAFSA, you may have already been uh, made painfully aware of FAFSA at this point, or this might be the first you're hearing of it. Either way, it's super helpful and I cannot encourage you enough to complete the FAFSA. Uh, FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. I can never remember that acronym, so I always have to read it. Um, but FAFSA is just, yeah, so important. FAFSA is 100% free and it's a federal tool to provide financial aid such as grants. Um, and so when you complete a fa the FAFSA form, you're putting in your financial uh, information and you're submitting that to the FAFSA team and they determine your EFC, which is your estimated family contribution. This is not a dollar amount. Sometimes that name can make it sound like they're determining an exact amount of money that you'd be able to contribute to your student's um, tuition. But really what it is, is it um, uh, kind of just a metric to look at, a numerical metric to look at, um, to compare you to other families, uh, to your ability to kind of afford tuition and the other expenses that go along with attending um, college. So that can get really confusing sometimes. All of that to say, FAFSA is so helpful and it is necessary um, and required in order for you to be eligible for grants and federal loans. And so uh, FAFSA opens up on October 1st. It's open right now for fall of 2022. Um, it must be filled out each year for the upcoming academic year. So um, students who have already completed it for fall of 2022, they're good for that entire year, fall and spring. But for the next year, their sophomore year as a college student, they would need to complete it again. And it's all reevaluated when they complete it a second time. So the first year, if you're eligible for certain grants, but then your family's financial situation change, changes between the freshman and sophomore year, then your grants might you know, significantly increase or decrease. And then finally, where do I fill out the FAFSA? You can go to fafsa.gov or studentaid.gov to complete the FAFSA. And so, as I mentioned, um, the FAFSA is required in order to receive grants from the government. And so these are the different grants that you can receive by completing the FAFSA. The first is the federal grant from the federal government. This is money from the national government and it's called either the Pell Grant or the SEOG grant. The Pell Grant, which is kind of the more generic one, um, students can receive up to $6,342 a year. That actually might be a little outdated. I think it might be $6,495 now, actually. Um, but yeah, this is a more generic federal, federal grant based off of your FAFSA. And then the SEOG grant, uh, it, students can receive up to $1,500 a year for that. This is kind of a, a very um, specialized and niche grant for students who basically wait for the moment that the um, FAFSA opens up on October 1st each year. And they're one of the first few to complete their, uh, their FAFSA form. And so for the handful of students who complete it first, they receive that SEOG grant. 
The next level of grants comes from the state level, and that is yeah, money from the state government, which would be the Cal grant. And so students can receive up to $9,084 per year. This just requires a GPA verification by March 2nd. And so we receive students um, transcripts. And so we can that could easily be verified. And that's typically kind of built into the process. So there's not much to be um, extra work necessary throughout that process. Excuse me. If you have any additional questions, again, you can reach out to your admissions rep on that. And then finally, the, the lowest level of these grants is institutional. And this is money from the college or university. So in our case, it would be the APU, APU grant. And there's nothing additional needed for the qualification to receive that APU grant. Um, and uh, this is kind of the cherry on top grant that APU likes to provide students um, that, that's need-based. Um, but this is basically saying, you know, we have looked at your financial aid package. We see how much you're receiving or not receiving in the Pell Grant or Cal Grant or um, academic merit scholarships. And so we kind of want to add this to, to make it that much more appealing for you to attend APU based off of your financial needs. And so with that, 52.6% of incoming students receive the APU grant to some extent. So we are really wanting to, to offer students um, as much free aid as possible. That is one thing that I, I truly love about APU um, is the transparency. If there's ever an ability for us to provide students with more free aid, we will always do that. You don't need to ask for it. We aren't going to have some kind of shady process where, you know, you could have gotten this, but you didn't find out about it. And so we're just going to give you this much. If we have the ability to give you more aid, we always will. It's just automated in our system. And so finally, here we have the conversation of loans. And loans aren't uh, for everyone. It's solely based off of your family's financial situation, your tolerance for debt and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, if you hear anything from me on the topic of loans, hear that we never want families or students to feel um, pressured to take out loans. Um, it is a conversation that you have with your family. Um, but we just want to provide you with all the information so you can make the best decision for your family. Um, and so with that, we can kind of jump into what that looks like. And we can go into more detail um, your admissions rep can kind of go into more detail if you'd like, um, but I'll try and go into it as much as possible. So for federal direct student loans, we have two kinds, subsidized student loans and unsubsidized student loans. For subsidized student loans, the nice perk of that is that the government pays your interest during school plus six months after you graduate. And so the hope is that um, you know, you take out a certain amount of that subsidized loan, it would not accrue any interest during your four years at APU or any other university, and it would give you six months to essentially find a job and be able to start covering that interest and in payment, and then you would start paying it back at that point. So that's really nice. Um, that's the subsidized loan, no interest during the four years. With the unsubsidized loan, the government does not pay your interest and interest accrues immediately when you receive the loan. With both of these loans, both subsidized and unsubsidized, you don't have to make any payments until six months after you graduate. But with the unsubsidized loan, that interest will be accruing during those four years. So sometimes that can get confusing. It's a lot of all of the same kind of vowels and consonants being said at the same time. So um, if you have any questions on that, feel free to throw that in the Q&A. So for loan limits, um, for the direct loans, direct student loans that we just talked about, it goes up um, most every year, except for your senior year, um, and how much you can receive or how much you can take out in those loans. So for the direct student loans, freshmen can take out a total of 5,500. Um, sophomores can take out a total of 6,500. And juniors and seniors can take out a total of 7,500. This is typically a, um, the amount of both subsidized and subsidized together. So it wouldn't be 5,500 in only one, typically, sometimes it might be, but the majority of the time, it, uh, a part of it is subsidized and part of it is unsubsidized, but that's different per each family and student and financial situation. 
And then we have our direct parent plus loans. And these are um, a bit more nuanced um, and there's, there's more pros and cons here. We typically, um, if students are interested in learning more about loans, we kind of direct them towards the student loans first um, because those have the, the most benefits and the best interest rates for the direct student loans this year. It's about um, a little over three and a half percent on those interest rates. For the parent plus loans, the interest rate on that is closer to five and a half percent. So it's quite a bit higher in interest. Um, and for the direct parent plus loans, uh, you also have to start paying those back immediately and the interest starts accruing immediately as well. So it's kind of a more uh, traditional style loan, but the big pro here to the direct parent plus loan is that you can take out all the way up to the cost of attendance. Um, and so the cost of attendance is really any expenses that you have that could, can, that could uh, uh, entail transportation and um you know, all books, all of that kind of stuff would factor into um, the, the cost of attendance. So we definitely don't encourage families to take out a ton of money in these direct parent plus loans, but just so you know how much you are able to take out, the direct parent plus loan can be um, just a huge help when it comes to needing that money to, to make it more affordable. Um, but also just a last note on, on kind of these kinds of loans is um, sometimes the numbers just don't work. And again, we don't ever want to pressure families to take out loans. And if in order to come to APU, your student or your family needs to, to have, you know, tens of, thousand, tens of thousands of dollars or, you know, even a hundred of thousands of dollars in debt, we really don't want to put that on your family. Um, we, again, want you to make the best decision for your family and for your student. So, um, that can be a conversation and, and maybe sometimes going to a community college for a year or two is what's necessary and they can transfer in and graduate from APU um, and kind of get that, that experience that they're looking for as well. Um, but we just want to make sure that we're making that clear and offering those different paths to um, the same end of graduation. And so finally, um, if you want to reach out to us, uh, I believe uh, Camille threw it in the chat already. Uh, but you can find us at admissions at apu.edu. You can also call us at that number down there. Uh, but hopefully this was this was helpful to all of you. Um, again, hopefully we have some some questions in the chat right now. I will stop sharing my screen here, and we can kind of jump into uh, the Q and A or any questions that we have. Awesome. Cool. Well, Autumn, do we have uh, any questions that we need answered in the Q&A right now? If not, totally fine. <laughs> I think most of the questions were, um, I was able to answer kind of as you were going along. So I think we might be good, but if you guys have any other questions that you're thinking of right now, um, go ahead and put them in there and we can look through them. Wonderful. Hopefully I did my job well then if all questions were answered. But yeah, if you have any questions right now, Q&A is still open um, and I am more than happy to answer those. We'll probably give it a, a few minutes um, to, to see if anyone has some last minute questions. But if you don't, thank you so much for coming. We really do appreciate you, you joining us today. Um, Again, I know I've said it a million times, but feel free to reach out to your admissions rep, your individual admissions rep. They, it is truly their, their sole job to, and my sole job, to be a resource to you, to inform you on all of these kinds of things for uh, financial aid and FAFSA and you know, campus life and major specific things. We can get you in contact with different um, faculty and staff around the campus as well, get you connected with disability and accessibility resources if that's something you need. Um, all kinds of different things, you you name it, and we'll be able to connect you with them. So um, yeah, we're, we're absolutely open to that. Okay, it looks like we have a few questions in the Q&A here now. Let me see if I can answer these. First one I see is what I have to attend campus to get my BSN, then join the RN program. Uh, you would need to attend 
the main Azusa campus for the traditional undergraduate experience. Um, our, our nursing program is um, pretty specific with their program. It's a very competitive program. Um, and so once you are admitted into that program, you're put into a cohort um, and there's clinicals that are around the greater LA area. I think we have a, um, a connection with about eight different schools or eight different hospitals rather that you'll go into and providing, be providing services for them and learning through those hospitals, um, which is a really cool part of the program. But all that to say, you would need to be on campus um, for that. Next question I see is, how do we find out who our admissions rep is? That's a great question. You can reach out to, um, I believe uh, Camille put it in the chat here. You can email ugadmissions at apu.edu. So we have two emails that are surprisingly close to each other, but go ahead and email ugadmissions at apu.edu and they can tell you who your rep is and connect you with them um, to get some more information. If you email admissions at apu.edu, you will also be connected with someone. Um, so really anything with apu.edu at the end of it and you'll be all clear. Next question I see here is, is there any benefit to getting an unsubsidized versus, un, an unsubsidized versus subsidized loan? Um, I would say subsidized is typically a better place to start. Um, that is my, typically where I direct students. Um, definitely, like I said, again, it is what's best for your family and, and you as a student potentially. Um, but because subsidized loans don't accrue interest over the course of the four years and then plus six months, that's just typically the better option because you'll be you'll end up paying slightly less because of those four years that you didn't have to pay interest on. Um, after that, next in line would be unsubsidized. And then after that would be the direct parent plus loan, typically. Um, obviously, yeah, it can be totally different for each family depending on what they want to do. But I, yeah, that's typically the order that I, I direct people to take out loans if they are interested in that is subsidized, unsubsidized, direct parent plus. Great question. And finally, last question I see here is for FAFSA, do they include investment slash retirement money of parents for eligibility for financial help? That's a great question and a toughie. Do they include investments slash retirement money for, of parents for eligibility for financial help? I don't think so. I say that very tentatively. I cannot guarantee that. Um, when you complete the FAFSA form, they will ask for all kinds of different information on um, you know, income and assets and liabilities and all of that kind of stuff. So it would probably be factored in um, to some extent. Um, but if it's like a 401k that you can't touch until you're, you know, 62 and a half or 61 and a half, whatever that is, um, then I don't know if that would be considered in that as well. Um, I would say reach out to your specific admissions rep and they can either scour the FAFSA.gov website or they can connect with our financial aid office on campus and get a, a more concrete answer for you on that. That's a really good question. Any other last minute questions? Awesome. Well, I will start to wind us down here, but again, thank you all so much for coming. It was great to, to have you all here and, and be able to kind of talk through all the finances of, a, of attending a university and paying for college. Um, we, we love being able to connect with families and provide this information for you. So always really thankful to, to connect in these ways. Um, but yeah, feel free to reach out if you have any questions in the future. Um, but you all have a great night and thanks again for coming.